Olá pessoal, meu nome é Rafael Lemos, eu sou orientador da rede Education USA, estou localizado aqui na cidade de São Paulo, especificamente na Universidade Presbiteriana Mackenzie. É, o Education USA ele é uma rede do Departamento de Estado dos Estados Unidos que visa oferecer informações precisas, abrangentes e atualizadas sobre oportunidades de estudo nos Estados Unidos. E para uh, completar essa missão, né, hoje nós temos aqui o Patrick Morrison, da University of South Dakota, que vai falar um pouquinho mais sobre ciências da saúde nos Estados Unidos, é, quais são os principais cursos e como que isso funciona. So, uh, Patrick, thank you very much for uh, joining us today, um, and the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Um, well, thanks for everyone uh, for joining today. So I'm just gonna give a kind of a 20 minute presentation on studying health sciences in the United States. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Um, so um, first, I just kind of wanna set the stage here to sort of speak of what I mean by health science. So basically this is a wide variety of disciplines um, that are focused on the delivery of healthcare. So um, all of these fields together, they're all science-based study, um, specifically of health problems and focus on outcomes, but they're also very interdisciplinary, right? So it's not just think like, you know, biology is the study of biology or neuroscience the study of the brain, but um, in, in the health science careers, there's also other fields that come in perhaps like social work, um, nutrition, other, other areas. So. These include the studies of natural and behavioral science, nutrition, and public health. A lot of these, some have all three, some have two of those three. So these are often viewed in the United States as alternatives to medical schools. So, um, you know, medical school in the United States is very competitive to get into, very time consuming medical study. To be a doctor in the United States is often seven to eight years, or probably more like eight to nine years of study and um, very expensive. So these are all viewed as alternatives um, to people that want to be involved in the health science sector, but don't maybe want to have that medical commitment, the commitment that medical school requires. Uh, these are also very highly adaptable and flexible compared to other medical and clinical programs. Um, so as you'll see as I go through the slide. So uh, if you logged on today to learn about, I want to be a medical doctor, um, we're not going to be talking about medical school today. Instead, we're going to talk about health science careers that still can get you engaged in health sciences, but um, are, are a little bit different in focus. So I've listed some of the popular fields of study here. We're not going to talk about all of these, but we'll talk about a good seven or eight of them. So you can see they range from things like addiction studies. So for example, treating uh, individuals with alcoholism, uh, alcohol and other substance abuse issues, to um, health service administration. So this would be like the business of running um, a health clinic or a hospital. Uh, nursing, of course, we're all familiar with. Um, public health, right? So how do we prevent a global pandemic from taking hold? Or once it does, um, how do we do to, to deal with it and address it? So um, like I said, I'll be talking about six or seven of these more in depth uh, throughout the presentation. So first is dental hygiene. So right, so in the United States, um, you know, when you go to the dentist twice a year, essentially, you know, you spend of your hour appointment maybe three minutes with the dentist. They come in, okay, um, check everything's okay. But for the most part, you're dealing with your dental hygienist. So these are the uh, person doing the X-rays. This is the person doing, um, uh, you know, the actual cleaning of the teeth, talking to you about your, um, you know, brushing habits and different things like that. Um, doing kind of the educational piece of um, dental care. So, um, you know, again, they're really working on preventing dental um, issues from occurring. Um, the coursework within the university, this, these are all four, <coughs> excuse me, four year bachelor's degrees in the United States. Um, coursework includes dental anatomy, radiology, right? Because they're the people doing x rays, uh, per periodontology, pharmacology, right? Because they still have to understand. Um, you know, how um, pharmaceuticals interact with in the dental context and nutrition, right? Because they're also going to be the main frontline educators on, you know, uh, helping you develop good teeth and brushing habits and things like that, all the way down to from, you know, children all the way up to the elderly. 
usually you do two years of what we call prerequisite study. So uh, you're going to take an introductory coursework, maybe like anatomy and physiology courses, chemistry, and then there's two years of intensive study and practicums. And by practicums, I mean you are, this is, you can see our dental hygiene lab here. You're actually working with patients under the supervision of dental hygiene, uh, hygiene professors and um, getting that practical experience before you go out into the workforce. So we expect um, job demand here in the United States to grow by 6% uh, between now and the end of the decade. And the median pay of a dental hygienist is $76,000 in the United States. So big demand, also some pretty big salaries, which is pretty good for a four-year degree, right? Um, occasionally, you would go on to postgraduate study for dental hygiene. Um, however, for the most part, if you're going to do that, you're mainly going into education or public health. Uh, for the most part, this is a pra practical degree where you get your bachelor's degree in dental hygiene and then go out into the workforce. Another health science degree that people might not necessarily think about is kinesiology and sport management. So this is essentially um, on the health science side of it would be exercise assessment. So you're training um, you know, prescription, like telling people what they need to do to you know, improve their uh, physique or what have you. Um, also specifically working with athletes, right? So you're a personal trainer to an athlete or you're working on a training staff of a college athletic team or a professional athletic team. Um, this is also, there are ways to, you know, if you're interested in business, but also maybe interest a little bit in the health sciences. Um, sport management can also be the managing of a facility where exercise science occurs. So think managing a gym, managing um, a sports facility, tennis club, those sorts of things. So coursework, again, is very interdisciplinary here. So from, and what I mean by interdisciplinary from a wide variety of academic areas of study. So um, nutrition is integral, right? How do we feed the body to help it be stronger? Um, exercise physiology, right? How does the body, how do body mechanics and things like that, biomechanics work? Rehabilitation, you know, you get an injury, um, you know, in an athletic event or what have you, how do we you know, make sure that we get you back to full strength. And then also things like marketing and, and event management, right? Especially because, you know, in, the, in today's day and age, you know, you might not just be a personal trainer, you might also own the gym. And therefore it's important to, um, you know, to have that business side and the business acumen um, available for you. Job demand is pretty rapidly growing. So between um, 2014 and 2024, projected about 27% growth. This is a rapidly growing area in the United States, similar to Brazil, where sports are very important. Sports are very important in the US. Often this is a gateway to physical therapy, um, a doctor, doctor degree in physical therapy, um, unlike some countries where it's a four or five year degree to be a physical therapist. In the United States, that is a postgraduate degree. So you do have to get a four year bachelor's degree and then go on to get a, a doctoral degree in physical therapy. Also um, a pathway, common pathway to occupational therapy. So physical therapy is for, you know, you perhaps break your leg um, and you go to the phys physical therapist to help you get back to strength. Um, occupational therapy would be, um, you, you permanently lose use of an arm um, or a leg or something like that. And that's occupational therapies. How do you evolve into your new, um, how do you structure your life under that new reality? So physical therapy is more temporary, occupational therapy is dealing with that. So, but exercise science, nutrition, all those sorts of things are all pathways into, um, into those two fields. Another common um, pathway for students into the health sciences is medical laboratory science. So this field you would work with and supervise pathologists, medical lab technicians, and other lab specialists in hospital and clinical settings. So think about it, you know, you're under the weather, you might have, you know, the flu or something like that. How do you know? You go into the doctor, the doctor, you know, we've all done a PCR test for COVID. We may, we do that for strep throat. Well, that's going to the medical lab, right? And that's where these individuals are the ones that are processing those samples um, and uh, maybe blood work, those sorts of things. So these are obviously integral to the um, practice of health um, and, he and health sciences in general. And so um, our, for example, at my university, we have a medical laboratory science degree. 
those individuals maybe aren't necessarily processing the samples, right? When they graduate that degree, they're going to be the ones overseeing the clinic, right? The, the, the medical lab or working in a very specialized environment um, that really requires that education and that specialized knowledge. Graduates of these degrees do receive national certification so they could work anywhere in the United States. Um, and coursework, so hematology, so blood work, clinical chemistry and microbiology, right? Makes sense of sort of if there's maybe, a, you know, think poisoning or other sorts of uh, environmental factor that's making someone sick. Immunology, right? Where how does the body react to viruses and things like that? Parasitology, so, you know, is there something in the body that is um, impacting, you know, living thing that's impacting someone's health? So this was a little more science focused, but you're also, um, working in a lab and so there's clinical elements, you still are, um, you know, having those, um, you know, those uh, clinical um, experience. And so you'll get that through clinical rotations and practicums. Um, our, again, our program at our university, we have three years of study in, um, you know, at, on the campus and you do a full year in a placement um, through clinical rotations for different labs. So job growth also very much in demand. We see a 14%, we're expecting a 14% increase in this by 2026. Um, and there are, you know, you certainly could do postgraduate study. Most students would probably go into something like biomedical engineering, perhaps biomedical sciences, more research field. So if they are more particular, you know, interested perhaps more in immunology and they really like that, they want to take that clinical experience and go on to more of a research focus. But again, most students with this degree would be actually working in the field. So another um, key piece of health science um, is mental health counseling. So this is, um, you know, health is not just the body, but also the mind here in the United States, especially, right? We, we put a lot of emphasis on that and a growing emphasis on uh, mental health and, and dealing with those issues, right? So, um, so mental health counselors, they take a variety of um, professions that all kind of are under this. Um, area, but um, for the most part, they're providing counseling services, um, maybe an addiction study. So as I mentioned, you might be working in addiction studies, uh, treatment or uh, counseling. So um, working with individuals that have substance abuse, helping them through that to um, get that um, addiction, um, you know, into a, to a better place. Um, mental health, of course, and then behavioral issues, you know, so um, maybe more working with youth and school systems and things like that. Um, most of the time, counselors do require some sort of postgraduate degree and licensure. So um, what I mean by licensure is, you know, you can't just get a, go and get a bachelor's degree in psychology and decide I'm going to go see patients and be a counselor in the United States. You usually have to get uh, a master's degree um, if it's something like educational psychology or a PhD if it's going to be if you want to be a clinical psychologist, for example. But there are some degrees like um, addiction studies where you would be able to, um, you know, practice, you know, be an addiction studies counselor um, with just a bachelor's degree. But again, you usually get that licensure um, as part of your academic program. And, and so that way you, again, have that, um, you know, that license to be able to go see patients and you get approval from the government or the state for that. So, um, you know, again, if we're thinking of that uh, postgrad study, you're getting that bachelor's degree first, you're gonna be taking courses in psychology, maybe addiction studies, sociology, neuroscience, are all very important. So also that continues that theme of being an interdisciplinary um, endeavor. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, coursework once you're in the program could be things like human development. So how does the brain evolve over time and um, how can trauma impact that? disaster psychology. That's a, something that we do here at the university. So, um, you know, think of, you know, if somebody has suffered through a natural disaster, an act of terrorism, you know, perhaps, um, you know, armed conflict. How do you, we work with um, individuals processing that trauma um, toxicology? So think, okay, you know, if you're dealing with somebody who's taken a lot of substances, right, how does that impact um, mental health? Industrial psychology. So this could be how does it you think a big workplace, how do we structure these things? How do we, um, you know, um, you know, what, if we work for a big company, how do we keep our employees happy and all that sort of thing? And then also individual and group counseling. So uh, as one can imagine, this is a very much of an in-demand field as well, uh, expected growth of 25% by 2029. 
So, um, you know, very much uh, area of emphasis here in the United States and really around the world. And so there's a, a wide variety of options within um, counseling. So nursing, um, this is probably when people think of health sciences or what we call the allied health fields. Most people kind of tend to think of nursing, right? Well, if I'm, if I'm not a doctor, I'm probably going to be a nurse. Um, and depending on the country, nurses, maybe the level of respect accorded to nurses might differ. In the United States, it's a highly respected profession, right? Um, nurses, again, similar to dental hygienists, that's a, a lot of people when you go to the doctor, your main interactions are with the nurse. Nurses have a lot of, depending on the type of nurse, have varying levels of authority and things that they can and cannot do, um, but it's a pretty wide um, area of um, responsibility. So, like I said, extensive patient care responsibilities, much more so in the United States and other countries. Uh, graduates of nursing degrees are eligible for national certifications. So, again, you know, graduate from a uh, U.S. university with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, you can get a national uh, certification, allows you to work in many states. Coursework, also very interdisciplinary, nutrition, microbiology, pharmacology, cl clinical practice, uh, pathophysiology. So nurses, also similar to dental hygiene in many ways, they also have to do two years of prerequisite study. And then you usually do two years of intensive study and practicum. So again, your first two years might be things like, um, you know, uh, anatomy, physiology, organic chemistry, um, those sorts of things, statistics, and then, um, but also things like speech. Um, speech is a required course for nursing school. Um, and then you do uh, two years of intensive study where you'll do clinical rotations and practicum. So you'll have, when you graduate, you have been into the clinics, been into hospitals, have that practical experience, that knowledge. So when you get out into the workforce, you'll have not only your bachelor's degree, but um, a good level of preparation as well. So job demand, um, again, the, the common theme here is the demand is high for health science here in the United States, um, expected by 2030 to grow 12%. Also, you know, uh, nurses, depending on the country, you know, I've been in places where, you know, again, nursing doesn't seem to be as respected profession or compensated well. In the United States, they're well, well respected and they get compensated well. So the median salary for nurses in the United States is $73,000. Uh, which is, you know, quite good um, here in the United States. And there's also pathways available for nurses for at, at the postgraduate level to pursue master's and doctoral degrees. Um, so, for example, um, there's, you can be a nurse practitioner, which is a um, very close to uh, basically you know, doctors have the most power, you know, most authority is to make sort of decision making. And then there's physicians, assistants, and doctors of nursing practice that can still go in and to see patients and dispense medication and things like that. So it is a pathway if you still want to be in that patient care, but maybe to work your way up, there's uh, postgraduate degrees that you're able to do that. As well as, you know, there's nothing preventing you from getting a nursing degree and then going on to medical school, right, or attempting to go out to medical school. There's not like a saying, well, once you're a nurse, you can't be a doctor, right? That, that's, um, you know, certainly an option for students as well. So nutrition and di dietetics. So this is basically taking science and applying it to food and nutrition to advance health outcomes and prevent disease, right? So the, the better people, the better nutrition and better nourished people are, the less likelihood they'll get sick, the more, the quicker they'll recover from um, illness and things like that. So this is a little bit different in that there, um, you generally work in healthcare wellness education, but even food service operations, right? So, you know, you might work for a big company. Um, how do we make our food better for people? Still tastes good, but like better for individuals. Um, coursework in this um, anatomy, but also things like food principle, food science, and then also a lot of various nutrition areas. So medical nutrition, community health and nutrition. Um, so there's a variety of different pathways you can take if you are focusing maybe more on um, you know, the physical side of things like uh, exercise science, physical therapy, that's a little bit one way. Another might be more community health. And so it's, that's more of the intersection into public health, right? That maybe you're a nutritionist working more in the public health sector. So students with nutrition degrees, typically they will create a uh, complete an internship and then they can sit for exams to be a registered um, dietitian nutritionist, which is a, you know, national credential as well. Um, again, high job demand um, expected to grow 8% by 2029.
current median salaries are about $61,000 per year. And, um, you know, certainly could go on to postgrad study more in the, you know, um, clinical fields, uh, perhaps, or if you want to go more into the food science side of things, there's a lot of programs here in the United States in that food science sector. I think this might be my last slide here before um, we can get to questions, but um, public health. So this is obviously a big one when we think of where we've been the last two years with the pandemic. A lot of the measures that governments um, and communities have taken around COVID-19 are solidly within the um, public health sector. So public health focuses on the prevention and mitigation. So prevention, we don't want it to get here. Mitigation, once it's here, let's lessen the impact um, of diseases. Um, as well as health challenges that in fact uh, impact communities. So this could be things like pollution and also things like malnutrition. So it goes back to that previous um, field of study that I mentioned. So um, this is different than many health science fields in that rather than dealing with individuals, right? A dental hygienist worries about their patient in front of them, the nurse, the patient in front of them. Public health, um, folks in public health worry about the community. Right, and that community can be a town, it could be a city, it could be a country. Um, and so you're not worried about individual health, but community health. And so coursework that you'll take within your bachelor's degree here um, would be things like biostatistics, um, epidemiology, so disease and disease spread, health service administration. So that's the business of health, but how does that, um, how do our clinics and hospitals and um, health networks address the needs of community health? social and behavioral sciences and environmental health. So again, if we have a, you know, pollution issues, how is that impacting the community? And is there anything we can do to less, you know, you know, at a community level to, to mitigate those um, environmental health impacts. So the job growth and medium salaries really depends on practice field and kind of where you're at. Um, and most folks that are involved at a higher level in public health they would typically go get an MPH, a Master of Public Health. So this is a very widely recognized professional credential um, and it's really focusing on more of the leadership and the big community issues um, in public health. And with that, I'm just gonna take one or two minutes just to explain a little bit about the University of South Dakota in case if anything I've said maybe interests you. Um, all those programs we have on our campus that I mentioned except dental hygiene, we do have that, but unfortunately, um, right now it's for, um, you have to be a US citizen or permanent resident to be in that program. But so USD, we're located in the upper Midwest of the US, about 200 undergraduate and 70 graduate programs. Um, one of our fastest growing colleges on campus is our School of Health Sciences. We have strong programs in nursing, addiction studies, social work, medical laboratory science, kinesiology and sport management. We also have a lot of programs more in what I call the pure sciences. So things like biology, biomedical engineering, neuroscience. So if you're interested in, you know, human health in the body and things like that, but you're not really, you wanna do more of the research end of things, we have those programs. And you can see small class sizes, um, good student life. Um, and we're also a very affordable institution as well for international students. So total cost about $23,000 per year for international students. We do have merit scholarships available and uh, a lot of on-campus job opportunities and um, uh, low cost of living as well here in the state. So if you want, need any uh, more information about the university, feel free to send me an email. You can send me a WhatsApp. Um, yeah, thank you and obrigado. And uh, Rafael, I'll turn it over to you if there's any questions. Obrigado to you as well. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, presentation. And um, we already have a question uh, on the chat. Uh, but uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to put on the chat or uh, open your mic, okay? I can answer Helen's question. Um, okay. So, yeah, so um, studying medicine in kind of uh, a country, um, you know, that has a different medical system, you would, to finish studying here, you would need the equivalent of a four-year bachelor's degree. So you would essentially have two options. One is you could transfer to a U.S. university, complete your bachelor's degree here, and then go to medical school in the United States. 
I, you know, I wouldn't really necessarily recommend that. I would say complete your medical studies in Brazil. And there are ways that you can, there's certain a series of exams you can take and other um, things like that, where you could perhaps come to the US and do, you know, your clinical rotations or um, things like that. I, I'm not an expert in that area, but I know there's plenty of information on the web on, on, online. I, I'm, I'm sure EDUSA, um, I know EDUSA Belgium um, has a, a page that I've shared. Um, I don't know if Rafael can speak to if there's a page in Brazil about that pathways. But if you just give it a Google, you can see how you can how can you take your foreign medical license and try and come to the United States to practice. Um, that's perfect. And uh, Helen, uh, feel free to contact us on Education USA. So uh, we also have advising sessions. Uh, specifically for medicine. So if you want more information on that, feel free to contact us. You're welcome. Uh, do we have any other questions? Ou temos mais alguma pergunta? Pode ser em português também que eu, eu faço a tradução aqui. Olá, tudo Oi, bem? Oi, Ellen. Tudo bem? Tudo bem. Então, é... existe alguma forma de, de... Porque eu tenho muita vontade de continuar a minha faculdade nos Estados Unidos, só que acontece o seguinte, eu já estou no quarto ano de medicina aqui no Brasil, uhum. e eu não queria perder todos esses anos de estudo, e eu sei que, que nos Estados Unidos é totalmente diferente, que, que, que teria que fazer um pré-medicina, que eles falam, né? Que seria algumas matérias na área de saúde, é, para depois ingressar no curso de medicina, que é como se fosse uma pós-graduação, que não é como no Brasil, né? Isso. É, a minha dúvida é a seguinte, como eu já estou no quarto ano de medicina e eu olhei algumas grades de algumas faculdades aonde pré-medicina corresponde já ao que eu já cursei aqui, que seria laboratório, é, a biologia, a química, isso daí eu já fiz na faculdade aqui de medicina. Existe algum algum é, curso ou é, alguma forma de eu aproveitar, pelo menos para pré-medicina, para eu não precisar uhum. fazer o pré, porque eu já fiz até mais do que um pré-medicina, né? Mas, assim, se, se pudesse pelo menos aproveitar o pré-medicina para depois ingressar, já, já fazer aquele curso, aquela prova que tem, né? Depois que para você ingressar na universidade, já como medicina. É, o que a gente recomenda aqui na, na rede Education USA, um, and I'm just going to answer her quickly because uh, she was just um, explaining a little bit more about her, about her question. Um, o que a gente geralmente recomenda é que, em primeiro lugar, o, o local que você estuda a medicina vai influenciar onde você também vai praticá-la. Então, caso você, os estudantes já tenham iniciado o curso de medicina aqui no Brasil, o que a gente costuma recomendar é que tente fazer uma residência médica, que é um processo mais simplificado, digamos assim, e que tem mais retorno para os estudantes. Então, é uma, é uma forma, assim, de você colocar em prática esses seus conhecimentos da medicina nos Estados Unidos. E caso você tenha interesse também em saber um pouquinho mais sobre esse, esse caminho da residência médica, você pode marcar uma orientação conosco também. A gente tem Então, eu teria que uma... terminar, terminar o curso de medicina aqui no Brasil... E isso, aí fazer isso. uma prova de residência para fazer uma residência médica. E eu fazendo essa residência médica nos Estados Unidos, eu posso é, atuar como médica nos Estados Unidos? Não necessariamente. Você uh, teria esse período lá como médica residente. Mas é, são questões que a gente pode explorar na, em uma orientação individual, com certeza. Tá bom? Tá certo, então, obrigada. De nada. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was just explaining about a medical residency and how it works in the United States. And uh, we have one last question from Raissa. 
Yes, so I think that that is the other South Dakota school. South Dakota State University has mm -hmm. plant science. So uh, unfortunately, I, I don't uh, have any information on that, but it's a good school. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have plant science. That's the other South Dakota. That's the other South Dakota school. All right. Uh, so if we don't have more questions, um, I just want to thank you, Patrick, for uh, taking the time and um, really just giving us a really good presentation on health sciences. And uh, this presentation is going to be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, so thank you very much. All right, thank you. Have a good afternoon or evening, I guess, in your time zone, so. Yeah, almost evening. <laughs> yes, yeah. okay. All right, bye, thank you. Thank you. Obrigado, gente. Tchau, tchau.